Is it 2024 already? Hmm, damn, my guys, my gals, my non-binary pals. Last year has flown, don't you think? I've got this uncanny feeling that every year is going faster than the previous one. Maybe that's because I am getting older. 2023 was the year in which I became 30, but also the year in which my girls and I made quite a bit of impressive projects. And you can interpret impressive both as in impressively successful and in, well, impressively not successful. <laughs> and I thought to start off this year properly, let's take a cozy look back at everything that we have created this year. So grab a drink, coffee, tea, water, champagne, and let's get cozy. Can you still see me? I tried to um, not be total chaos in this video and actually I have sorted my 2023 makes, which is either knit or crochet in chronological order and somehow my brain thought that I could fit it all on one pile but even with two piles it's not really structurally sound. Yeah I did my best, we, I, we did our best. Um, I set myself a challenge on Ravelry every year and I try to make 15 items every year and I think you can guess from this that I have quite crushed my challenge. I think I made 19 items, but not all of them are in here because some of them were gifts or I have since frogged. Let's get into it, shall we? Oh, if you see me scrolling on my phone, um, I'm not distracted and I'm also not ignoring you. I'm using my Ravelry project page as a personal notebook to see what I wrote down when I actually finished this thing, because this very first thing is actually a year old. It's an audience favorite, my yellow marzipan pullover. The pattern is by Sari Nordland and the yarn is hand spun. And if you don't notice, in 2022 I made a first version of the sweater I'm actually wearing right now. The sweater I am wearing right now is an 1897 cycling sweater, but there is a modern pattern to it and I used that modern pattern and the pattern asked for a 12 wraps per inches yarn. I spun or I tried to spin that yarn, but I came out 11 wraps per inch. You would say that that was just a tad bit too big, but it was humongous. It was so big, it was actually cumbersome to wear. So I frogged that one. Then during Tour de Vlies 2022, I spun this yarn and made a new one. And then with the frogged yarn, I made this marzipan, for which the 11 wraps per inch were just perfect. This has rapidly become one of my favorite pieces in my wardrobe, just because it is so vibrantly yellow and the cables are so beautifully intricate. Now, what did I write down on Ravelry? Ah, yeah. I did some modifications on this. Um, the original marzipan pullover has a folded over neck band, which I did not. And it also ends with a knit one, purl one hem border, whatever. I also did not do that because the neckline is a knit two purl two and I wanted my sweater to end the same way as the neckband started. I finished the knitting of this on January 2nd, but then I dyed it with onion peels and the entire project was finished on January 9th. The next project I made, the next garment I made in 2023 is the Best Way 1379 pullover for the girls in the services. It was my first and only sweater vest that I have made up until now. I made it with hand spun, actually scrap spun sock yarn, which is a blend of Dutch spotted sheep and some Flemish sheep. So this was an actual 1940s wartime pattern, which has a really beautiful like honeycomb mock cable patterning on it. Got no words, it's just fantastic. There are some stuff I would change though, or I have changed. The directions for the neckband is wildly off. You see, I've got this stitched in there as a leftover 
and still the neckline isn't perfect. I would make it even smaller. Same goes for the uh, armbands, they're also wibbly wobbly because they're slightly a little bit too big. But overall, I really like wearing this. It makes any outfit look vintage in an instant. The Pantone color for 2023 was Viva Magenta. And I took the challenge upon me to make something in magenta. Well, if we're going to do something in a modern color, then the pattern better be historic. So this is a 1894 Tam O Shanter, which I made with hand spun Flemish sheep, which I then dyed with cochineal. It is one of my most worn hats, which you can see at the part where um, my, the back of my neck hits the hat. The color has faded a little bit. It has stayed quite nice on everywhere else on the hat, but just there where the back of my neck hits the hat, it's faded. Although my, my neck didn't turn magenta, if you're wondering. The pattern for the 1894 Tam O'Shanter is found in full directions for knitting socks, stockings, babies, coat, dolls and semen stings, etc. Over 430 patterns, sizes and sorts, which can be found on the internet library archive.org. Also, just a quick break between all the projects. If you see anything that you like and it has a pattern that is available through the internet, I will link it in the description. Service to you all. My next project isn't a garment. It's a frog! Um, it's not just a frog, it is actually my Pathfinder character, Harapan, who is a Gripply. And now I have a, a small, cuddly Harapan to take with me every time we play the campaign. She has her, her weapon of choice, her fishy hook, she has her purple tunic, and one of her character traits is that she likes to find, collect and wear shiny things, so she has all kinds of pearls and buttons. It is, of course, the very popular frog pattern by Claire Garland. The next thing I made is no longer with us, as I frogged it as it was not the correct size. It is another 1940s pattern that I made. Patterns 893, just called 1940 sweater. My gauge was almost correct, but I think my grist was way off. I think I had a, I had spun a very, very dense yarn. And while the pattern asked for four ounces of yarn, the sweater that I made actually weighed 14. Just slightly off, you know, just slightly. Anyway, that is frogged, but you will see the yarn later in this video, like one of the very last things I will show you. So stick around. Apparently March was my month of not so successful projects because after the way too big 1940 sweaters I also made a way too big beret. The Levelu beret, it is a pattern by Melina Hami. I made it in hand spun, it was a mixture of Flemish sheep and uh, Angora and then the blue was also Flemish sheep and everything well went... Uh, what's this? What's this yellow fluff doing here? Well everything actually went as it should have it fit me when I cast off, but I noticed that my blue yarn that I dyed with indigo, but didn't have a video about it because everything was recorded without audio, it stained. It stained so bad. I was a smurf, literally. So to combat that, I put my entire hat in a bucket of water and vinegar, and somehow it grew tremendously. Um, so yeah, this is as of today not frogged, so I can show it to you, but this will be frogged. This will no longer exist in 2024. I need to make something else with this yarn because it is a pity to leave the Angora like this. Anyway, I had some Angora leftover and I had some disappointment to work through, so with the leftover Angora I made a little headband of which I have totally forgotten the pattern. I also didn't write it down in my Ravelry projects page, but I believe it was a free pattern, um, most likely from Drops or Garn Studio. It's a cabled headband, which I do wear a lot whenever I wear my hair like this, because this is not a comfortable hairstyle to wear with regular hats. So a headband it is. This is remarkably soft. 
of course, because it is Angora. Around that same time, I actually got my first support spindle and with the first support spindle spun yarn, I made another little headband, this time without a pattern. I've got nothing to say, it's just this. After March and April is May, May the 4th, be with you. In May, or well, actually I started it in April, finished it. First of May, I made a ray. In May, I made a ray vest. It is a, well, not a copy, but like a facsimile of the vest she is wearing in The Last Jedi, which according to me is a masterpiece of a movie. Fight me in the comments. I made this one not with hand spun, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost halfway through 2023 and this is our first project that isn't made with hand spun or hand dyed yarn. Wow! This is made with Drops Air, which is very airy and this was the exact yarn that the pattern used, but I found that a little bit strange as this collar is supposed to stand up. But how is Drops Air ever going to stand up? It's just not going to happen. And then summer came around and you know summer is a time of festivals. And looking at me, you can honestly say that I am not your standard metalhead, but I am still a metalhead, so I went to Graspop. As it was my first time going to a festival, I did not have all the necessities needed. So, to go to Graspop, I made a bucket head and a matching fanny pack to, you know, be comfortable, not get sunburned, have my stuff close. For the life of me, I cannot find the bucket head. I have been wearing it all summer, not only at the festival, but also on my holiday, and it seems to just have mysteriously disappeared. But I do still have on my pile over here the fanny pack and it is showing many signs of being worn thoroughly, like the zipper is giving away. Um, my woven in and I wove them in, but they're coming loose and there is just a lot of pilling on this acrylic. Oh, this is another first. This is the first project in this list that is not made with 100% natural fibers. This bag has seen almost the entirety of Europe last summer. So, uh, most practical project that I made this year, for sure. And we get to our very first pair of socks. <laughs> I don't have to come close. You can see from that far that they're heckin' vibrant. This was some sock yarn, the orange, that my grandmom gave me, but there was no more label attached to it. So I can't tell you which brand or yarn this is. The gray is Sachemeyer. How I constructed these socks is I saw this leaf chart on Pinterest and I thought it was really pretty. And then I made a toe up sock, starting with a Turkish cast on, as I usually do. And gave it an afterthought heel so I could just, you know, fit as I go. I wasn't following a pattern at all, just going by feeling, going by this chart. Knitting for a summer wardrobe is not always easy, but I still did. I made the Alberta sunrise top in a yarn that is not hand spun, but still hand dyed. And I think this is you no, know, like Ashford yarn that you can buy on the cones, 100% uh, wool, and I dyed it with stinging nettles. It's just nice, breezy, airy. Throw it on over a dress and summer ready. And then I think this was my biggest undertaking. No, no, I'm lying. I am lying, I just glanced sideways, this was not my biggest undertaking, but it was a big undertaking nonetheless. I made a hand spun Ariana cardigan, you know, the well-known Ariana cardigan by the Barocco company. If you've seen the video on this, you know that I had to modify the pattern in the way that I only made a four round square, while the pattern asks for a five round square. And even when I did that, it is still large, very, very large, um, but cozy. This is so cozy. I, uh, this is my cozy cardigan of choice. And I received so many compliments on this one specifically. 
maybe it is because the granny squares give away that it is necessarily handmade because you can't do crochet with a machine. I finished that one in time for granny square day, which is August 15th, but then apparently I have a hiatus because my next project is my Socktober project. So October. What did I do in September? Apparently I was working on the biggest undertaking. But in the meantime, I could also finish a pair of actually stockings, like knee highs. I scrap blended some more bats because that's the thing I do when I make socks. It's a toxic trait of mine. Why use good yarn when you have scraps? Anyhow, scraps. I made a three ply sock yarn. It was like lace weight. It had some it has some alpaca in it, but also some acrylic and some wool. It's it's a blend. It's really a mixture. I once again, as I am wont to do with socks, did not follow a pattern. Um, I used a chart that is in one of my grandmom's knitting books and just again started to toe up, guessed wherever I should leave a heel and then worked the rest of the leg. I still need to add like elastic to the, um, the cuff because they're sliding off. I made the cuff not cinched in enough. But that will happen because I, god dang, I love these socks. They're so you know, they, they elevate an outfit, like for real, they elevate the outfit. The lace pattern on this is so dainty and then all the colors, it's perfect chaos goblin socks. And now, you know this heap of black, don't you? This was my biggest undertaking of 2023. It is a hand-spun sweater. Not just hand-spun, it is lace weight hand-spun sweater for my husband, who is actually a giant. And right now we just have a black hole on the screen. It's another vintage 1950s pattern, 1950s this time, not 40s, um, from the booklet everyone wears sweaters. I spun this during Tour de Vlies. I started knitting at this in September. I knitted through October, November, and then finally it was done at the end of November. I had to spin more yarn a couple of times. This was, or well, it seemed never ending. The never-ending sweater. Oh. But it's finally done. It fits my husband, thank God. And now I can make the exact same one for myself, but that will be a 2024 endeavor. And after that massive, massive undertaking, I wanted something smaller, something quicker. I made, I don't have it with me now because it was a gift. I made a little baby hat. I made the quick, ombre hat. It has since been gifted to the recipient and well I can say that mom already was very happy with it. I don't know how the baby feels about it because he can't talk yet. So my camera just said that it stopped recording automatically because the maximum recording time had been reached. I don't know if it's going to... Ah. <laughs> I'm just going to continue. As I was in a hat craze, I made myself a hat. This is the Edge of Twilight hat, which is a free pattern that resembles the Musselburgh hat because I was seeing all these beautiful Musselburgh hats all over Instagram and I was like, I want one, I need one. So I made one and I made it with only spindle spun yarn. Like, <laughs> how exciting is that? So ever since I made this hat, I must admit, the Tamo Shanter you saw earlier hasn't been my most worn hat. It's been this, because it's so nice and lovely and warm and I love it. And I have got nothing to say about it except just gushing with all the love that I have for this. I also knit it with my grandmom's knitting needles, which made this extra special. And now, 
as I have teased the yarn from the 1940 sweater that I had to frog because the grist was probably too high, the yarn too thick to dance is this. I made a 1970s, thus 1940s sweater with it because I wanted to keep the 1940s sensibilities of the cut and the puff sleeves, but knitted with much larger needles. This is knit on needles 5 mm, which was much more suitable for the yarn that I made. And now it is a very warm, yet lightweight, comfortable, beautiful, basic sweater that has, well, I don't know, I have been wearing it every other week, I think. Mm. Just, just all the love for this sweater. I'm, you know, I'm hesitant to frog my projects, especially when they're finished. But then you make something like this, the cover model of Ariadne 1979, February edition. And just, wh why didn't I frog this earlier? This year, I also wanted to make myself my own Christmas sweater so that I could wear it to all the festivities that we have been going through the past couple of weeks and that have been frankly quite overwhelming. But I had a beautiful sweater to wear, so that makes up for it. And it is this, it is the Lumme, Lumme, Lumme sweater again by Sari Nordland. And I made it in Rowan felted tweed that I got in Barcelona from Miss Kitts. And then I realized that I can also get Rowan felted tweed at my local yarn store, for which I still have a gift voucher. <laughs> now it has these extra special memories infused of being Barcelona yarn. Anyway. This color work is gosh darn gorgeous and the light gray and the green make it read like a Christmas sweater, but like not overtly Christmassy. Like I can wear this as a normal sweater too. Like this is, this is what I strive for people. Wearability, maximum wearability in my garments. So Christmas sweater, yes, but you know, I'll be wearing this with Easter as well. I didn't do the short rows on the sweater, I just made one that is the same on all sides because, you know, I just put everything either in my trousers or in my skirts. So why would I do the extra step of making the bag longer if, you don't, if I don't get the advantages of it? And then to finish off 2023 strong, I did a first super bulky spin project which is this, oh my God, this is hefty in comparison to all the rest I have been holding. This is my very first super bulky hand spun sweater. It is the Frosted Cathedral pattern, again by Drops slash Garn Studio. It is really my emotional support sweater, as you saw last week. And if you didn't, every project where there is a video on shall also be linked down in the description. I mean, the description box is something. Take a look at it, maybe. Super bulky spun Flemish sheep, because that's my go-to, as I have <laughs> 20 kilograms of it still. This is not for everybody, I know, because this still smells like sheep. It's very unruly, very fluffy, but this was a banger ending of 2023 for me. Anyhow, that were all my knit and crochet projects of 2023. Now, 2024, do we have plans? Of course. Are they very concrete and specific? Well, probably not. There are a couple of things that I have in mind. I find in my stack right here that there is a lack of historic knitting. I did like a few in the very beginning and then I went to more modern patterns, which is great because I love all of them, but I miss the historic knitting. So I'm going to do more of that. Also, I have been spinning like off and on and I don't have a video on this yet. Some very beautiful alpaca yarn. I really want to make something with this. What do you think? What would be a great pattern for this alpaca yarn? 
I have also been buying some yarn on my vacation. So I got some in France, I got some more in Spain. I got so much yarns that I'm so excited for. And then with Christmas, I got more. So for Christmas, my mom and my partner separately gave me two things that just go so well together and have me inspired. Firstly, my husband, my partner, gave me these two skeins of Lang Yarns Muse Hand Dyed, which he bought in Greece when he was there for work, which has this beautiful magenta purple, you know. And then my mom bought me two bags of um, combed top, of which one is this color. Like, do you, do, do you see this? Do you, do you see the coincidental matching my husband and my mom did? Like, this is only like 300 grams. I mean, I say only, but mm, is this enough for a sweater spin? Because I think these two combined would be absolute I can't even find a word for it it's so gorgeous so that's a plan I want to get started on sooner rather than later and then of course there is the largest undertaking part two so I am making the exact same sweater as I made for my husband but then for myself possibly in the shape of a cardigan I'm not that far yet and I also will have to spin more so friends, tell me in the comments what was your favorite project of this massive pile. <laughs> I do realize that this is a lot of knitting. What are your 2024 knitting and or crochet and or spinning and or weaving and or any other craft plans? I would like to know, maybe I can get some inspiration for it as well. And is there something that you would really, like really, love to see on this channel in 2024? Pray, let me know. All that rests for me to say is if you like these kind of fiber shenanigans and maybe you could like comment or subscribe and if you're interested in seeing more detailed knitting here is a playlist and I will see you in a next video. Bye!